some of my spinning wing birds down to the road, see if there's any uh, tourist on there today. Might be interested in buying one. Make a nice little ornament for your lawn. Some days you bring them out and it's blowing hard. They, the wings get to go in and whack into each other. I'm scared it's going to knock the, the paint off them. Like the, anyway, they got to go out for people to see. So, there was a guy in the eye yesterday. He said, Smoke, I didn't know you was an artist. I said, God, yes, I was an artist for the government for 45 years. He said, what, what doing? I said, drawing on employment. So I went from being an artist to an artist. <laughs> A real artist. A real artist. Now I'm painting. Painting stuff now. I usually, supper time, you get, you know, a crowd of people going up the lills to get the supper from away or whatever. They hear about the good grub she's got. Seems to be about the best time to, for somebody to stop in and look at your work. It's supper time to dark. So. You get a lot of lookers, not many buyers. That once the tourists get coming, next month, in July, would be a big time for them. How's the wind here? Uh, I'd say it's just about southwest. I don't know if there's enough to spin them or not. They might. They might. Some of them spin better than others, according to... You don't get a good uh, a good draw or wind here. It baffles it baffles around so much. So you put these out in your field somewhere where the wind, you know, where the wind really. You, I can feel it here on my face, but that isn't really the way that it's coming. Okay. I don't know, I can't really, really tell. Usually it don't take too much to get him going. Ah, the puffin, he wants to fly. He hit his tooth, that fella. Let's see if we can get the, the kingfisher to take off. He ain't getting a good, a good draft on him there. For God's sake, I must have put that redoot through. The kingfisher will, will spend the best of any of them. There's really not enough wind. There's really not enough wind to do. My God, that wind is far from far from summer here. I tell you that. No wonder these birds don't want to fly. They froze death. Yeah, they have froze to death. Whole oh, thing. They got. What this, you there? this is the last one I just finished. It was showing the American flag, so I take it it's somewhere down in the States that light I've seen. So to make it look right, I had to put the American flag on it. Now this one is Peggy's Cove, the bigger one here. Supposed to be a twilight scene, just growing dark. And this one here. The picture for this one was in my father's house. God knows how old it was. I had a, well, it was so faded I had a job to see it, but I'm thinking it's somewhere down below Lunenburg. Blue Rocks, in that area in the late 60s or 50s or 40s, it was taken. But I wanted to paint it, so I done it. That one up here, that is another a guy was in last week said he'd been to that lighthouse, it's in Callis, Maine, that scene. But he looks good on that players board, like it almost looked like a canvas painting. It almost looked like a canvas painting. And it's got wire on back for hanging. They got the wire and everything's on them, they're all ready to go. All you've got to do is, the back has been uh. painted, the wire's there. Drive a nail in your living room wall, or whatever you want. Hang it up, it's there for a lifetime. Two coats of varnish on it, you'll never hurt it. it make a, a nice centerpiece. Now, some of my rocks. 
I got the two black labs. I see that picture. They look nice. Nice picture in the rose busted rose breasted grosbeak. beak. I see that in one of the bird box. And here's a little saw wet owl. He looks big in that picture on that rock, but in real life, they're about four, five, six inches high. They're not very big owl, very small. Very small little owl. And down to the bottom, I've got the Baltimore Oriole sitting on some orange blossoms. I take it's an orange tree, or it's not apple blossom, so I take it to somewhere warmer climate. It must be orange blossoms. So anyway, that's some of it. I got a jag of stuff left up to the house yet. I had my sawing down there. But so people could see it a little better up on a on two befores, but man, we've had such storms the last couple of winters. I couldn't afford the two before. Every time it blow a hundred. It would snap a two before off and I'd have to get somebody to help me. I said the devil with that. I'm a bringing it up and spiking it right on the old house here. If it blows that hard, that it blows this house down in that sign, I'm not going to worry about it because I'll be gone too. So that's where it's going to stay. I ain't nailing it up no more. Daughter's got me that for Father's Day two years ago. Nice little sign. But yeah, I mean it blows so in the winter you can't you can't put it out in the open anywhere because that four by eight sheet of plywood in behind that, that holds some wind. So that's where it's gonna be. The little buggers is uh they're my beautiful little bird, but oh 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 hard to paint. Very hard to paint. I freed with him here all morning trying to, to get him to look right sitting on that rock. I got at least one more to go on now if I can get him. I'd like to get one more right here. But the, the beautiful, like I said, beautiful little birds, Atlantic puffins, but there's so many color shades to them and stuff. They're hard to paint. And I'll get him. I never wash that brush out very good. I'm getting a, a little bit of shade of red on that. I never wash my brush out good. Hurrying. But I got to go over it anyway. So, But that's what it's going to be. At least this one. This one I got on there. And I'm going to try to get another one. Read in here somewhere, and that'll just about fill that up. I'll make a nice little picture. Make a nice little picture when it's done. A couple coats of varnish on it. It'll be all right. But I got to get my saw finished this evening, hopefully. The saw I have to lay on this cardboard because it wants when it's in that easel, it's too hard for me to get at it. So I have to lay it on this cardboard. I wasn't satisfied with with three on it. I said, man, it's not covering the saw. The last one I done had nine pintails on it, but they were smaller. I made them smaller than this. And I come in this morning, I said, man, I got to try to get one more on here. Well, lo and behold, I haven't got enough room for his wing down here. So I'm going to have to make it look like both wings are up in between flaps, like, to finish that painting. These saws are old, both saws. The, the one that had the pintails on it was 70 year old, and this one he didn't know how old it was. He figured it was one of the first plastic handle saws that was made. Tom Boyd gave me these two saws. There was his father's. He was a carpenter in the... Uh, so one is already sold and this one is spoke for. So I'm going to try to finish this up this evening. Tomorrow I can put the coat of varnish on it and be ready to go.
Didn't have no trouble selling that, huh? No, no. Big demand for saws. I'm going to put lighthouse scene on the next one, the cape scene that's up there on the wall. Uh, on the next saw I do. It's going to be in a smaller, you know, in a smaller frame because on a saw I'm going to have to try to get the lighthouse way up in here so I can get the height right. But I'm going to try a lighthouse scene on my next saw. This makes, I think, the third saw I've done. I've done one with a black lab on it and seat ups, and one with nine pin tails, and this one. So I'm going to go with a, with a lighthouse scene for my next saw. People bring them here, they go to yard sales. Like I was showing you this old saw here. Bob Hopkins brought me this the other Sunday, I guess. He went to a yard sale in uh, Arthur Rose Island, and he see this saw then, he asked the guy, how much you want for this saw? And he said, oh, a couple dollars. <laughs> now look, the saw has hardly been, I know it's old, just by the looks of the handle, and you can tell it's old because it has no hole back here to hang it up, right? And he said it had been used because look here, it's got HLN. The initials on it, H-L-N. And the tag, the tag is still on it here. So i got to try to get that off without scraping it up too much. Now I'm going to leave the handle as it is. I'll put a coat of varnish on it. That gives it character. So I might put a lighthouse scene on that one. And it's going to have to be done, well, either way. It don't make any difference, I guess. I seem to like to do my saws this way. Then the initials would be that. That'll give it a little character. But that sucker seems like he's he's sharp, very sharp. Never been used. And like I say, God knows how old it is. It, I don't see no price on it. Not that. I'm trying to see where it where it come from. Hatfields. Come from Ronnie Hatfield's store down Clark's Harbor. And I tell you, that's been gone at least 30 years. That's where that was bought. The Ronnie Hatfield's hardware store. Yes, at least that long. So, anyway, be another nice saw to do. Now, swords. I, I love painting on swords and gearing them up. But like I say, there's only so many hours in a day. You, you're trying to paint rocks. You're trying to paint canvas. You're trying to paint on plasteboard. These little buoys I'm doing. But I've got a couple done. This one here I've done for my, done for my brother, Larry, that's in Bayside. And he was pretty well paralyzed from a massive stroke three or four years ago. And so he loved sword fishing. So I've done that one for him. I make the handle, the handle is made of swordfish sword, the whole deal, and it makes a nice little scene, and my cousin in Shelburne, her mother would be a sister to my mom, she died very young of cancer, she wanted me to do her one with a wharf and a boat and, and stuff, so I put the old man's last boat on it. The red boat belonged to my father, the last one that he built. He built 40-something boats. And he had enough lumber left over when he was done to build himself one. So he named it Too Late. And he got to fish it a few years before he passed away. Fishery was pretty well over. And it's pretty well a uh, Smithville scene, like down Smithville where we used to live. Freddie Hopkins' old wharf in the creek, we used to call it with the little wharf and stuff there. I know she's going to like it. So. But I lost the phone number. I can't get a hold of her. So she'll call back one of these days and want to know if I got it done. Oh. Well, I brought home about 100 foot from the first section and more than enough make that belt pin. But they said I could have it all post two before in the work. So I went over to... Now this picture here, I had a picture that... It was taken of me going on a swordfish in 1988, the first year I went striker for early weekends. And if you notice, there is a speaker out in the stand, taped to the stand. 
because we had an American spot a plane spotting a swordfish world for us, so I had to have the speaker out there so I could hear him when he called and when he put me in on the fish, so I knew right where the fish was. So uh, I always wanted to paint that picture, and I noticed I got a, a high flyer and blooms out in here on the edge of this tide rip. There's a fish we've already stuck, and we're going on this big fella here, just come out of the tide rip. And uh, I always wanted to paint that picture. Now, the other day it come over me, I said, I'm going to paint it. So, But I think it looks all right. It depicts what harpooning swordfish is all about. That people don't know what it's about. Well, there you are, out in the stand by yourself with a 12-foot lunium pole and a brass dart. And me and Mr. Swordfish come face to face. Sometimes I win. Sometimes he wins. As I get older... More swordfish win than I do because I think I'm getting blind. What's that shear water doing there? That shear water, I've seen them do that so many times when you're running on a swordfish, they come at the boat and the last minute, instead of running the boat down, they'll they'll flare up and roll up on the side. Man, sometimes almost take your hat off your head. So I put him in there just for uh, to make it look like that, that kind of stuff does happen when you're running on swordfish. They come scaling in. In the last second, they'll flare and go. But they make a nice little picture for somebody that that been sword fishing and would you know because it's very often you see it, if it's a picture, it's taken with a camera right out there. But to be painted, I don't know if anybody's ever painted a picture of somebody going up on a swordfish. So, but I enjoy painting swordfish, the colors and stuff. I've seen so many that I can almost paint them in my sleep. But. That make a nice little picture for somebody to hang on the wall. For fifty bucks, what can you get today for fifty dollars? Have a nice picture of old gun smoke going up on a big swordfish. Maybe they like the swordfish, not me, but they make no difference. I'm in it. Left-handed, you notice it's a left-hand striker. And the pilot we had that year said, the striker's doing a good job, Arlie, but there's something different about him. He looked again, he said, well, I got a southpaw, the first time I've ever seen a southpaw striker. But he said, I ain't growling because he's got everyone I put him on today, but rarely you'll see a left-handed striker. Well, there it is, a southpaw striker. That's in my younger days. I painted the top half of me in the younger days. The bottom half I painted as I am now with the big butt and fat legs. That's, that's the price you pay getting old and fat. Ranger, just hold your ground on him. Hold your ground on him. He'll get aggressive if he sees your hands going, right? I put my hands behind my back. And he don't mean to bite hard. Oh, he rough, oh, he mad. Ruffling in his feathers. <laughs> Ain't ya? Yeah. You gonna go down and see the crow with us? Oh. There's, there's, uh, there's Manny. I named him Manny after Manny Harper. Yeah. And big blue eyes. Bruce. He usually talks, you know what I mean? Like, a lot. He don't know what to make of that camera. What is it? Yeah. You get nervous, do ya? Yeah, you're a wild animal like anything else. He's got a nice place there. What more could a crow want? A bucket of water, all the food he can eat, a tarp over him for shade. What happened to him? Huh? What happened? I would say the way when I found him, he uh, hit the wires, hit telephone wires, electric light wires. But he's doing better. He's getting a little stronger in his wings and stuff. Come, Manny. Come on. Come on. Your name ain't Manny, Bruce. He ain't no big eater. Like, he'll pick a little bit of stuff, table scraps. Come, Manny. Come on. He has a job keep his balance with that bad leg. But he's getting stronger in his wings every day. That big a pin, he can get around a little bit. And he ain't no trouble because everything we feeding him, we throw out here 
for the crows anyway. Oh, oh yes, look out now that we might make a manny. And you ain't gonna get in the picture. Ah? Uh, see, that man with that camera, I don't know about him. I might have to eye this situation up a little more. There comes Manny out. See how he's got his little leg held up? See, that crow gets too much attention. And he don't. And he ain't liking it. Are ya? Eh? Huh? Are you a nuisance? No, nope, but see that camera looks like good eating. Whose boy are ya? Mama's? Are you Jody's boy? Or Mama's boy? Eh? Huh? You ain't talking much today. Usually he talks when you talk to him. Man, he don't mind him. Cats go lay down by him. He'll hop around his cage. Ah, I might eat a little grass while I'm here. Looks like tender morsels. Yeah. Just what I needed, another goose. Eh, some good me. You can't beat good old K-Ball and Clover, can you, Bruce? Eh? Nah. No good. Oh. The main thing there is a finger. Not grass. A finger. That is a finger. Oh, look. Oh. Look. Nice big fat. Oh. Nice big fat thump. <laughs> oh. Oh. Now. You be good. That's enough of that picking. Go pick somebody else. Pick on somebody your own size. What is it? What is it, Bruce? Go see. Go see what it is. It ain't no good to eat. No. What is it? So that crow gets a special grub. All I get is old clover oh, and grass. That's all I get. Junk to eat. Yeah. Trash. They eat some grass in the run of a day. He's some Larry, a stranger, so he knows. He gets to know you. That first day Jody and him brought him here, he chased me around the whole day. What is that, Fred? That's one of my deer we feeding. Comes here every night, one of the calves. Does, he's drove the calves off now, before the rut starts. Like, they move by the south. You got this one named? No, no name for this little one. What do you do, baby? Eh? I did it. Oh, oh. Oh, I ain't hanging around here. <laughs> He just goes there under that tree and lays down. I got too many animals. <laughs> 